Hello everybody. Welcome to this week's lecture. The topic at hand this week is the topic of arrays. An array is a data container that has the capacity to store set of data of the same type. So you can have an array of integers which is capable of saving multiple integers inside of it. Uh, or you can have an array of doubles, an array of floats, an array of strings, and so on and so forth. So in memory, if you have an integer that is going to be stored as such, and, and one integer has the capacity to hold um, one piece of data, right? If you had an array, an array would be saved in memory as such. Very similar to strings, it's going to have different cells. Each cell is going to hold a data member. Now we're going to go through this in um, in in detail. But what's interesting to to note is that we are going back to talking about data. So in the beginning of the course, we started to talk about uh, data, and we talked about um, defining variables and how variables work and the scope of each variable and, and all that. Then we started to talk about some programming constructs. So we started to, from there, we went to talking about decision structures. So we talked about how you're going to be making decisions in a computer program. Then we talked about another construct. We talked about repetition loops, repetition structures. Um, then we talked about functions. So we talked about how to organize our code, how can we uh, make use of um, reusing our code and, and, and having our code organized using, using functions. And now we, it's almost like we're going full circle back to data. We're, we're talking about more sophisticated data such as arrays and um, the other stuff that is coming after after arrays. Um, so in talking about arrays then, it's, it's like we're going full, full circle and we're talking about data. And for the remainder of the course, data is going to be the central uh, part because we have all these constructs to be able to manipulate and use data and store data properly. So data is going to be the central point. And in learning about arrays and other data structures, we're going to be using, of course, decision structures, repetition structures, and, and functions. So the lecture um, today, so the lectures are going to be a lot more sophisticated because um, they're going to include all these elements and all these constructs that we have already talked about and we're going to talk uh, and we're going to include them and see um, how they uh, work in terms of more sophisticated data structures. With regards to um, arrays, our goals are to first of all see what is an array and I talked about that a little bit. Uh, common computational tasks using arrays, such as sorting an array, uh, such as going through an array, um, going through different indices, uh, which is going to be quite similar to um, strings, such as how to change an array. Um, so we're going to talk about this. Then we're going to talk about two-dimensional um, arrays. So the arrays that we're going to first discuss, they only have one dimension, but if you, but if you had more, uh, more data, uh, then you would have a, a two dimensional, a two dimensional array. If you have data that are related together, such as a multiplication table, it's a two dimensional, um, data, uh, structure, basically. So we're going to talk about two dimensional arrays. And, uh, we're going to learn how to, um, use arrays with functions. This is going to be a very, very important topic. We are actually going to talk about, uh, so, so far we have talked about pass by value with regards to functions. We are going to be talking about pass by reference.
with regards to with regards to arrays so so this is going to be a major major topic that is going to be covered here um so let's talk about why uh well, what is an array and why do we do we need arrays well arrays are quite practical if i wanted to store and, and i do want to store all your grades um in the computer i would uh, store them in, in an array so essentially, you guys remember the flowchart that was a bit challenging where we were asking you to take input from the user and calculate the average. Now, in reality, that is not very user friendly because, for example, this semester we have 800 of you guys. If I want to calculate the average, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to punch in each number. So I wouldn't enter each number. Instead, I want to enter everything at, at, um, in the beginning. So what would happen is, realistically, I'm going to have this file that contains all your grades. This is going to be fed into my program. So program and my program is going to give me an output of the average that means I'm going to read the marks from this file into my program and my program is going to calculate the average the file is saved on disk so any file that you use so like if you if you open an old um let's say let's say a microsoft word file you're loading it from disk when the file is read and it is stored in an array then it is going to be on ram or in in memory and then what when, when it's loaded in ram then you can manipulate data and so on and so forth so i take your grades and i would actually load them inside of an array so i would let's say have 80 90 85 another 80 and all your 800 marks is going to be inside inside of an array so arrays are extremely useful in order for us to um store our data in it and basically go and and manipulate it. because if you don't have this some of you were doing this when you were doing the when you were calculating the average if you don't have data uh, if you don't have an array, what you end up doing is you're going to have 800 variables, which is crazy, right? Nobody can have that, that many variables. So that's why arrays are uh, incredibly useful. Uh, so I would take this array and then I would, I would, let's say, go through it, add all the elements and calculate the average. Notice all the marks on this arrays are, are, are quite high. Um, so hint, hint, I'm expecting all your grades to be high for this course as well. So study hard. Thanks.